Hi, today I'm going to talk about some Rhodia and Tomoe River paper. Right, so today we're going to talk about paper, and there's lots of paper out there for fountain pen users. We've got the ever popular Rhodia, Fairfontaine. Around Asia, where we are, we have a lot of Kukuyo and Maruman, and they're very popular. But today I'm just going to talk about just two very popular types of paper that everyone seems to be talking about. One is Rhodia. I've taken the liberty of using a thick 3.8 mm Pilot Parallel to write its name on it in case I forget. As you can see on the back side, it is virtually no, no, no bleed through. I also have the second one, which is happens to be Tomoe River. Slightly harder to get. I had to personally order this off Japan and get and get it forward, hit, forwarded here. Rodia 90 GSM, Tomoe River 52. Basically half the weight, size and, and thickness as well. And it's amazing how they've managed to basically what well, amounts to compress all those nice non-feathering, non non-bleed-through non properties into a much lighter piece of paper and that's probably one of the main attractions of it and as you can see yes no no bleed through whatsoever there's no black showing obviously since it's so thin there'll be show through but it, it, it doesn't really affect uh, legibility I'll do a little flex nib work just to show what this is like this is a oblique holder Nikko G um, ink it up Rhodia That's on the Rhodia. I'll let it dry for a bit. Have a little bit of ink left. Um, this is the Tomoe River. illustrates how how amazingly impermeable the the the, the Tomoe River paper is. Um, the whole point being, um, this is a, Japanese Nikko G's are very sharp, and they it can lay down a, quite a lot of ink. If you look on the back, Rhodia, no bleed through. Um, Tomoe River, fairly dry. Pretty much no bleed for either. However, um, it is a little bit thin. I usually only use one side because the sharp nib cuts a little bit and it makes it hard to write on the other side. And plus it's so thin so you can afford to send twice as much paper through the post. Is there a better paper of these two? It, it's for whatever you want. Um, there, there's no real better. Sometimes I feel like using dots. Sometimes um, with the Tomo River I will use guidelines. But finally, obviously, everyone might be rather curious, can you draw animals on Rodia dot paper? Maybe just join the dots. Or, you just draw random lines. Oh, careful, smudge. I mean, one fun thing about using water-soluble inks is what happens if you need to use watercolors on this paper. Um, I've found that when I do attempt to, to use watercolor, um, it's actually, they're actually reasonably water resistant even though I'm right now I'm using like a a, a, a a water brush. Capybara or, or, or maybe you don't like capybaras. One downside, yes, Tomo River. Things take a little bit longer to dry. Be careful of that. Just leave it out to dry for like 
five minutes to make sure you're not accidentally smudging stuff all over your hands. That's for this one. For some reason I like drawing the faces first. They seem to lead me onto the rest of the body. There you have your lovely koala. There you go. Let's take a look at the other side. Yes, this is thinner. There will be. It will take a while to dry, but it's warping a tiny bit of crinkliness. But I've also seen it when it's after it's dried, and you can totally write on the other side. Although you might not want to, since you might ruin the photo. So, yeah, there you go. Um, that's Tomo River and Rodia. Maybe if I turn them into anthropomorphic personifications, maybe in some life they'd be a capybara and a koala. So, yeah, there you go. Rodia and Tomo River. Um, two papers that I would certainly recommend to anyone who somehow doesn't know what sort of paper is fountain pen friendly, these two. Whoops, not that too much. That's like an evil cat now. What goes with the capybaras? Hedgehogs. Hedgehogs go well with everything. Some people might be bored with my regular hedgehogs. I have upgraded them. They now look like... They are now upgraded to be armed with weapons of mass distraction. There's the obligatory hedgehog armed with pollen. There you go. One fact that I did forget to mention, um, it's rather obvious now. When you line up the Tomo River with the Rodia, the Tomo River is marginally taller, and it's also a little bit 1cm wider and maybe one cm taller. Uh, how does this affect you? Not much, but if your A4 envelopes can barely fit Rodia regular A4 paper letters folded up into three, I found that I've had to buy slightly larger envelopes, slightly oversized envelopes, more like maybe full scap sizes to um, make sure that I can fit my letters inside when, when I'm writing with pen pals. Otherwise, you're gonna have one hell of a time trying to fit Tomo River A4 size paper into regular envelopes. Just a PSA. <laughs>